So here we're given a cubic graph, cubic function f of x. We're told that it's of this form. Now that's in factorised form. We're asked to find what the values of k, a and b are. So let's look at this from the point of view of asking where does this graph cross the x-axis? And we know it crosses at negative 5 and 4. But what would we do to this equation? Suppose we didn't know there was a negative 5 and a 4 as the intersection points of the x-axis. Well, we'd say when is f of x equal to 0? Where does it cross the x-axis when f of x equals 0? When that expression k times x minus a times x minus b times x minus b equals 0. And there's your x minus b all squared. So to solve this produces x equals negative 5 and x equals 4. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4 factors multiplied give you 0. Now, k is not 0 because if it was, f of x would be 0 times something. The whole thing would be 0 and the graph would have heights of 0 all the way along there. It obviously doesn't. So that's not 0. So either x minus a is equal to 0 or x minus b is equal to 0 or x minus b is equal to 0. Well, these second two, this repeated factor, gives you two answers which are the same, x equals b, x equals b. That's a repeated, a repeated root. And this one just gives us x equals a, single root. Now, it's a feature of these graphs that if the graph comes down and touches the x-axis, then that will give you a repeated root. So we know that x equals negative 5 is this case. Therefore, b is equal to negative 5. x equals 4 gives this. So a must be equal to 4. So what do we know now? We know that f of x is some number k times x minus 4 times x minus negative 5 squared. That's x plus 5 squared. Now what does this number k at the front do? Well suppose it was halved from the value it is. On the graph all the heights would be halved. This height would be down here. These heights of 0 would remain where they are. But this height would be halved. So it would squash the graph parallel to the y-axis. Or if this was double the value that it is, then all the heights would be doubled. In other words, it would stretch the graph parallel to the y-axis. So it's squashing and stretch. It's a scaling factor parallel to the y-axis. So to determine what that scaling factor parallel to the y-axis is, we'll use this information. That when 1 goes into f, out comes 9. 1 goes in, 9 comes out. So it means that k times 1 minus 4 times 1 plus 5, all squared, must be equal to 9. So therefore k times negative 3 times 6 squared equals 9. So to find the value of k, we'll divide both sides by negative 3 times 6 squared. So we'll get a negative answer. 9 over 3 times 36. We'll cancel 9. 9 into 9 is 1. 9 into 36 goes 4. We get negative 1 over 12. So the value of k must be negative a twelfth. So that's part A.
So let's look at the answer to part B. In this one we're told that there's a related function g of x which is the same as the function we had except we're now subtracting a positive number d from it. In other words we're taking all the heights on this graph and subtracting a number. For instance we could be moving them all down 1 if d was equal to 1 or down 2 if d was equal to 2 and so on. So this graph is sliding downwards. And we have to determine the range of values of d, possible values, for which g of x is exactly one real root. Now that means if we're solving g of x equals 0, we get one answer. In other words, that's where the new graph cuts the x-axis. We require one point only for that new graph, that's this old graph, but slid down parallel to the y-axis, we require this new graph to cross the x-axis at only one place. Now here's the graph sliding down parallel to the y-axis. So far that graph, that new graph, crosses at three places. When you look at the x-axis it crosses at three places. And now it crosses at two places. Eventually, it's only crossing at one place. That's a way along to the left of negative five. So how far did we have to slide that graph down before it only crossed the x-axis at one place? Well, since... This point up here is 1, 9. I'm having to slide that down a full 9 units before it crosses the x-axis at only one place. So d would have to be greater than 9, not equal to 9. There's then two intersections of the x-axis. Greater than 9, if I slide it down more than 9 units, it crosses the x-axis only at one place. Therefore, g of x has only one real root if d is greater than 9.